so I was watching a video from Sports Card Investor and it says taking massive losses and he's talking about the super high end magic or not magic super super high end sports cards and at the time he was saying that oh the Luca logo man is for auction these cards have gone for insane over millions of dollars right it was the time in March where you even though the economy was slowing down and you're like oh we could enter a recession people were still having record-breaking prices on like every single logo man every single card you know justin herbert went for an insane amount of money his nfl shield 101 which is not even a game worn shield it's just a regular macy's you go to macy's you can cut out your own logo and, <laughs> and make your own card right you wouldn't have the autograph but you could have everything else so they're looking surprised. It reminds me of that Northeast sports guy who gives sports advice. I, I know he won't say he does, but it is, he does give financial advice as to everyone does, right? Everyone who's telling them to buy this, don't buy this. And they can frame it different ways to offload responsibility. But as a lawyer, like once these cases, if these cases ever go to trial, they will ne probably never go to trial because the courts have more important things to do. But yeah, legally, like if you're giving, if you're like, hey guys, everyone buy Bitcoin and click on my link to buy from a third party Bitcoin person, um, that's financial advice, you know? So if you're telling people to click on links for stuff and you know, you're actually benefiting financially from giving advice based on doing something financial. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. My favorite moment is like when PMGs, Marvel PMGs dropped 95%, it didn't even phase him. He's like, oh, I, we all knew it was coming. I'm not surprised. So something that sold for 200,000 now sells for 10,000, but you're not surprised? <laughs> That's kind of like the Jeff Wilson at this segment in time. Like he's like, oh, I'm not surprised. So something that sold for millions now sells for tens of thousands and nobody's surprised. Everyone's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I think that Kobe uh, BGS 10 black label, that one got butchered. But at the end of the day, it's like, what does a black label even mean? It means that some random human being probably making a little bit more than minimal wage decided this was a really cool Kobe. Or that's the best way you can look at it. The worst way you can look at it, it was somebody's friend. You know, there's a lot of grading scandals, right? If you own a grading company, how are you going to prevent all these scandals? Hey, I saw my friend and this Kobe, eh, it doesn't look great, but I'm going to go and give it a black label because then my friend can give me a kickback. There's so many, or, you know, for instance, you used a grader like Card Collector 2, who then outsourced it to Mark's Cards. How do you know a company in financial dire straits receiving the same Kobe refractor card from multiple people doesn't change their PSA 9 for your PSA 10? Right? How would you even know? That a ton of people on YouTube, including loot box and stuff, they come, their cards come back and they're always so shocked, right? Oh, you know, I where's there's damage on this Lugia, there's damage on this valuable card. But what if that card wasn't your card? and you submit it through a group submitter and they do get bunches of Lugia, they do get bunches of, they do get bunches of charge I mean, it's not crazy to think a huge group submitter who was bankrupt and kind of corrupt morally anyway, like Mark's Cards, who is basically operating some type of, you know, Ponzi scheme where they don't keep the money in the escrow. They get four Lucas. One Luca is a BGS 10. Another Luca, the other Lucas are BGS 9s, 9.5s. Well, why wouldn't they take the BGS 10 and switch it out with their Luca? Which clearly they have because they are a game store. They are a card store. I think a lot of shady stuff. So that one in particular, you know, anytime you get like a black label and the fact that it's like 10 times the price never made any sense to me because at the end of the day, it's just a random person on minimal wage saying that this version is perfect. Okay, now back to uh, some of these cards. They never should have been the price. I think in March, what happened was when you saw all those record-breaking card prices, 
people wanted to stimulate the market. They wanted to do fake deals. I'm going to tell you something that happened to me that I learned about from Vintage Magics, a name I haven't talked about in a while. When he was doing his Black Lotus deal, it was $250,000, $250, right? And it wasn't all cash. It was trade. It's the same idea as Sasha T. So when I saw this over and over and over again, when Sasha T says he has a $500,000 charge art, what he really means he, is he paid 100,000 cash and then I think it was what, 340,000 trade. But that's not the same as when you tell somebody, oh, this is, I, you know, I paid a half a million dollars for this card. People are thinking it is all cash. But it's not that way. For a lot of these big deals, it is part trade, and if not, you know, even more than half trade, right? In Sasha T's deal, he only put in 100K cash. The rest of it was all trade. So how do you title your video a half a million dollar Charizard when most people think it's gonna be cash? But this is what's happening, right? Uh, and you see this in most people's videos. They do trades, but they pretend that it's cash. And it's very deceptive. I think loot box is a very good, de un uh, a really good video of trying to explain this. But I wish like somebody made one video explaining this concept when a trade is happening and it's between two known parties and they're both vendors. You know, one example I can give you is the Watts Rolexes and APs and Richard Mills. Right? It's exactly the same as trading cards, even in terms of value. When you went to this convention. You know, just like a, a trading card convention, they have watch conventions it's called IWJD or something. They're in Miami, they're, they're in the same locations. They're probably the same type of people go. Well, one dealer will sell one Rolex. Let's say I have a Rolex, I think a Saru, right? A Sapphire Ruby Rolex for not $80,000. It's a used, lightly polished. I sell it to a vendor for 85. I sell it, I bought, my client sells it to me for 80. I sell it to a vendor, another vendor at the convention for 85. That vendor sells it for another dude at 90. The other guy sells it for 95. They sell it for 100. They sell it for 110. And suddenly at the end of the convention, the cards are 200, not the card, the uh, Rolex is $400,000. You might be like, oh, that's insane. That would never happen with sports cards. I can tell you the exact time it happened with Sasha T. He bought a LeBron card, which is basically like worthless now, but he bought it, I think he paid 20,000 for it. And then he's at the convention and then at the airport for that convention, he sold it for 28,000. That card didn't become more valuable, 8,000 to almost 50% more valuable in two days, right? It's just this flip, 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 and it's kind of like, oh, we announced the old, and now, and now this card will get some shine, right? So the sports card investor, him being surprised that of these gi giant L's doesn't make any sense to me. Like, isn't he taking some of these giant L's on his cards? Like, if anyone knows that a giant L is coming on high-end cards, it would be the guy who paid overpaid for a star Michael Jordan card. Just recently, at the National of all places, right? I mean, that guy was spending hundreds of thousands, and then he did a, a video after of all the cool pickups he had. And he was like, "Wow, look at this pickup! It's twenty-five. It's it's only one fourth what it used, to, but it's a reason that it's twenty-five percent of what it used to be." So I think a lot of these people giving you advice, much of it very bad advice. When when something goes down ninety-five percent, I'm like, "Holy shit, man! How did that thing go down ninety-five percent?" But these people are just like, oh, just another day in the office. Don't, nothing to look here. Like it's the uh, meme of the dog with his little coffee and the house is on fire. That's what I imagine Jeff Wilson. That's why I imagine the other investors, right? Look, dude, if something I bought that was $20,000 became $5,000, if I, if I bought something for 20,000, no. Okay, if I bought something for $200,000, $200,000, half my home, well, my home is over a half a million, but it, it like a, a sizable chunk for anybody, anybody, I don't care. $200,000 is a 
huge amount of money for the majority of people and it's even a large amount of money for everybody. If I put $200,000 and I bought a set of PMG Marvels and then a month later I went on eBay or then everyone on my news feed, right? And everyone congratulated me and told me what a great deal was and I felt really good. I posted on my Instagram. And then a month later I get a comment. I get a comment saying, hey, ha ha ha, you suck, loser. And then a link to like an eBay link. I click the eBay link, it shows a similar, I don't know what it was, a golden auction or something like that. It shows an auction and the same cards, the same cards that I have bought for 200,000 were not now $10,000, meaning a 95% net loss. That is a big deal. That is a tremendous deal. And that tells you what these pumpers were doing all this time. So when a million dollar card, when a $10 million card sells for less than a hundred thousand when that kobe black label sells for almost nothing you have to understand somebody got caught holding the bag and i think we all got caught holding some type of bag right now if you're watching this video you probably invested in pokemon magic or sports cards and it's not funny jeff wilson it's not something that i would laugh at it is something that is very sad it's like a death. It's a death of your money. I mean, when the Lunar coin crashed with Doquan and so on, or Firefest, I understand. Hey, people who are not involved, they're going to look, you know, in the you know, Fire Festival, they're going to look at this and be like, oh, that's a group of entitled kids. Ha ha ha, their festival sucks. But there was people who didn't have places to sleep. There were people who were attacked. Their luggage was lost. They lost material property. And there were, some of them were locked in an airport for a day. There were actual bad things that happened possibly due to a organizer scamming people or giving bad, I mean, again, promoting something that was not real. And this is what sports cards is to me. It was over promoted by influencers who I do attribute blame to, not 100% to blame at the end of the day, you make your own choice. But if somebody is telling you, hey, this is a really good buy, and you trust that person and you respect them, you're gonna listen to their advice. It's just the way people work. People wanna be social, they wanna be friendly, they want to make people happy. So that's kind of my biggest takeaway from that video. It really sounded very hollow. It sounded like that one guy about PMGs. Somebody lost that money. Maybe it wasn't you, but at some point in time, that person who lost that money is never coming back to this hobby. Why would they? If you lost 95% of a $200,000 investment, would you ever, or I guess if you're married, would your wife ever allow you to make a similar investment in the future? And without these people making this type of investment, the millions of dollars for these cards, the cards never get to those prices to begin with, right? So my advice is, hey, everyone took massive losses. I took a giant L on just blah, 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 L, 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 right? Hey, I will eat it. I will eat it. There's nothing else we can do. We just have to effing eat it. And I will hope for greener pastures. But at the same time, I'm, I'm just going to tell you straight up. I'm 100% going to tell you straight up. If somebody gave you advice to buy a card and you bought that card based on that person's advice, that person is at least a little responsible. You know, the percentages don't really matter, right? Do not pitch yourself as a financial guru if you're going to sell people Lunar Coin, which will go to zero. Please don't do that. Because you're doing a disservice to the crypto industry if you're, if you're one of these people and you're doing a disservice to your sports card industry. Be very careful what you buy nowadays, guys. It is, it is uncharted waters and it's gonna feel bad. It's gonna be really bad for 18 to 24 months until Joe Biden gets defeated in elections. I've made it very clear. I think I know what the problem is. I have assessed what the problem is. At least for my small business, I know what the problem, I, I know who the problem is. 
and people in the comments, you know, Joe Biden supporters, they get really upset. And it's like, you must be new here because every poll is about Joe Biden. We even tried to live stream about Joe Biden one night, but then they caught community strike me based on the title. Bye guys.